With technology forever evolving, it appears that animation is at the best it's ever been. So the question lies, can it evolve any further? Animation began in 1914 with the first animated cartoon by Winsor McCay, a comic artist. His work, Gertie the Dinosaur, was one of the first successful fully animated cartoons and featured over 10,000 frames. McCay enlisted some help from his young neighbour and it was a lengthy process. Fitzsimmons, the neighbour, traced backgrounds onto rice paper whilst McKay drew an unthinkable number of drawings of Gertie. The drawings were inked and mounted on cardboard for registration. These were then checked using a specific machine and filmed with a film camera. This gave the illusion to moving pictures which astounded audiences. However, many people were inspired, one of these being the iconic Walt Disney. Now your host, Walt Disney. Most of us are inclined to think of the animated cartoon as a modern invention, like the airplane or the automobile. But actually, the idea of imparting life and motion to still pictures is as ancient as man himself. But in our time, we've seen this dream come true. The animated drawing has matured and has taken its rightful place among the fine arts. In 1928, Walt Disney was responsible for Steamboat Willie, the first animated cartoon to feature sound. Using the same method as McKay, he drew on rice paper on a light table to see the previous image. This was the birth of Mickey Mouse and started the animation revolution. Steamboat Willie. This was also the first public appearance of Mickey Mouse. Audiences were astonished to see drawings apparently making their own sounds. <laughs> of Steamboat Willie and other animations, Disney went on to succeed in creating the first fully animated feature film using the same process as McKay. A number of years before, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs used hand-drawn animation to bring the fairy tale to life. More than 250,000 paintings like these were created by Walt Disney and his staff of artists to make the most daring adventure in the history of motion pictures. Disney continuously followed this example up until 1989 when The Little Mermaid was the last Disney feature film to utilise hand-painted cell animation. It was also the first to use the newly developed process, computer animation production system. The Little Mermaid comes alive with excitement. The story of Ariel, a sea princess who longs to be part of the human world and falls head over fins for a handsome prince. Hoping to win him, Ariel strikes a bad deal with an evil sea witch, trading away the one thing the prince loves most about her, in return for a chance to be human too. What I want from you is... your voice. In 1991, Disney released Beauty and the Beast, which features sequences using computer-generated imagery during the ballroom scene, which allowed dramatic camera moves on the animated characters as they danced. Also, we see the two main animated protagonists dancing. However, these scenes have foundations within the hand-drawn animation classic Sleeping Beauty. According to Lloyd Norman, a Disney legend having began working with them during the production of Sleeping Beauty, the idea of recycling scenes was all down to Willie Ritherman, who directed The Jungle Book, Robin Hood and many more. Ritherman knew it was much harder to redraw scenes instead of imagining new ones, but this was his way of playing safe. These scenes worked before, so surely they would work again. For Beauty and the Beast, directed by Gary Trousdale and Kirk Wise, this technique was used to save time as they only had a few days left to work on the film. The animators took the iconic dance from Sleeping Beauty, resized and repositioned it, and left a note to change the characters from Aurora and Prince Philip to Belle and the Beast. This technique has helped show the progress animation has made, as the look in Beauty and the Beast is crisper and more visually pleasing whereas Sleeping Beauty is much older, and so it is clear that it's hand-drawn. The mix of hand-drawn and CGI continued for many years in films, such as Aladdin, up until 1995, with the release of the first ever computer-animated feature. Despite not producing Toy Story, Walt Disney Studios released it, being the first fully computer-animated film. It revolutionised the animation process, and was the first of many. you got a friend in me. Come on, let's wrangle up the cat. When the road looks 
Following this tradition, Disney and Pixar continued to coordinate and wow audiences with their computer-generated imagery, a notable film being Brave, the story of a young Scottish princess with bright orange curly hair. CGI was greatly useful in creating 1,500 individually sculpted strands that generate roughly 111,700 total hairs. To do this, a new computer program had to be created. This is a lot more complicated than the old-style hand-drawn hair that Disney had begun with. The look of hair is one of the more difficult things to get right in computer graphics because of its complex scatter and transmission of light. For Meredith's hair, a combination of both subsurface scattering and colored shadows were used to achieve its soft translucency. However, a character with many more hairs than Merida was made roughly a decade before in Monsters, Inc. The protagonist, Sully, is a large monster covered in fur and was one of the first Disney Pixar characters to have that much hair. As a result, a special program was used to create 2,320,413 hairs so that the animators could focus on the acting. It seems that the possibilities are endless when using CGI, as, if something can't be done with current technology, a new program will be specially made to do it. So where is the limit? Will CGI and 3D animation continue evolving to do everything we want it to? Or will there be a point when computers can no longer cope with the amount of detail being used in every animated feature length? I knew we had to raise the bar for this film. Um, uh, there have been other CG films that dealt uh, with properties of snow. Uh, but we knew in this show, since it was so pervasive and so extensive, that we would just have to go beyond what anyone has done before. There was no software uh, uh, that would create the type of effect that we wanted. So it was sort of hand-in-hand, -hand, artists and technology working hand-in-hand -hand to create it. We sent our animators and effects artists to Cheyenne, Wyoming to walk in sort of waist-deep snow. And it was really from that trip that they realized how difficult that uh, and how much effort it takes. With animation evolving to the point where we can animate over 2 million hairs that can move on their own, there lies the question, what style is better? Hand-drawn animation has the classic old-style feel to it, whereas the detailed CGI is impeccable and makes the fictional world feel real. We spoke to Jordan Barzoukas, an animation expert from Essex. Do you prefer hand-drawn animation or CGI? In your own words, how do you tell the difference between the two? Uh, I prefer uh, CGI and the difference obviously is that one uses computers and technology and one uses basic paper, cell animation, clay, anything that's traditional. What is your view on today's animation? Um, it's pretty good. It's a, roof, it's a bit more uh, open so people that don't draw can make the industry um, be part of the industry now, whereas before it was pretty much if you had talent, it was like that was the only way you could get it. We asked the general public their opinion on hand drawn animation versus CGI. Out of 43 people, 93% say they liked animated films. 68% of people think animation can progress past 3D CGI. 79% of people can tell the difference between hand drawn animation and CGI. 46% of people prefer CGI. 12% of people prefer hand-drawn animation. 42% of people don't mind which they watch. Going back to basics, if a mistake is made when drawing a scene, then it's much harder to rectify. But, through the use of computers, mistakes and faults are always made, but can be taken away with the click of a button. But does this mean animators are too reliant on technology? Today there's a lot less people with talent in the industry, more people that can use computers and more people that can 3D model, as opposed to people that can actually draw or design characters, so they pretty much... Um, it's changed as well, so the animators used to be the people that drew the character and drew it step by step, whereas these days someone can design the character, somebody else just animates it by using the rig and moving it step by step, so it's changed in a big way and a lot less people... I wouldn't say talent, it's people with slight talent, but... I would say that it's not a fluid process it used to be. Animation is an art form, and CGI takes away the use of pen and paper, and animators take in time over their work with redrawing characters and scenes to make them perfect. Despite the art being lost, 
is a new type being formed. The detail in Disney recent Tangled and Frozen still blows minds many years after their release. The ice in Frozen and detail in the hair and lanterns in Tangled is so intricate and defined that it could have only been achieved through the use of technology. If we want to stay immersed in the fictional worlds presented by Disney and Pixar, then we must keep pursuing CGI and not think about the past, only use it as a platform to leap into the future. Everything the light touches is our kingdom. What does a space ranger actually do? He's not a space ranger! She already has her knight in shiny armor, and it's not me. I ran away, and I am not going back. Where am I? Where are you? Shoot, you're in Radiator Springs. Hey, kid, you need help. And old Baloo's gonna learn you to fight like a bear. Now, come on, I'm gonna show you. You have been a good boy. Have a lollipop. You shouldn't have been in the West Wing! Well, you should learn to control your temper. Only explorers get in here. Not just any kid off the street with a helmet and a pair of goggles. Princess or not, learning to fight is essential. Don't turn your back on me, Scar. Ready or not, here I come! Is that a challenge? What are you doing? Next time, don't let your guard down because of a pair of big goo goo eyes! He's a One more rip and Eddie's done with me. And what do I do then, Buzz, huh? You tell me. Go and finish. And beyond! Oh, that's my favorite part! Look at him! Can we keep him? Are you nuts? 